ever thought to yourself, man, I really need to make a fake cinnamon roll? Who has ever thought that? Like, why Why would anybody think that? Why Cosplayers, would prop makers, staging companies, realtors who don't have time to bake, uh, drama teachers, people who want to play terrible pranks on their friends. I'm trying to do my job here. Thank you. Carry on. Hello, my darlings, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to be bringing you a quick craft. Quick crafts are meant to teach you something new in five... Hey, hi, hey there. Editing Parker here. She's going to continue to say five minutes because I was feeling real ambitious, but I can't edit this all down to five minutes. It comes out a little closer to six, but still very quick, still very informative. I hope you enjoy. Just ignore her when she says five minutes. We don't need to tell her. She, she doesn't need to know. She's going to think it's five minutes. It'll be our little secret minutes or less. Keep in mind it is not going to take you five minutes to actually accomplish the craft or to complete it. It might take you a lot longer than that, it might take you a full day, but I am going to teach you in five minutes video time. So today we are going to be learning how to make fake cinnamon rolls. This is uh, completely dry, There's you, you can't eat it, it's solid. Yeah, here's what we're going to need. Flour, salt, aluminum foil, wood glue, Mod Podge, or any kind of glue will really work. Does not matter if you use matte or gloss. Brown paint, you can use acrylic. I recommend oil. Some type of yellow or tan, those can be acrylic. Hot glue, hot glue sticks, some white paint, acrylic as well. Something to mix your paint in, your paint brushes. A bowl and mixing cups. How much you're actually gonna mix together is gonna depend on what you are making or how many of these you need to make. For something about this size, this was about a quarter cup and I still had enough left over to make this little guy. These two about the same size was a half cup and I made a third, but it was terrible, so it's not here. About palm sized. I'm just gonna teach you how to make one of these good medium sized ones and I'm going to be using a quarter cup for that. I am using expired flour. This is particularly great if you have expired flour and don't know what to do with it. This is going to be a one-to-one -one ratio salt to flour. Quarter cup of water, and you're just gonna add enough water to be able to get this to turn into dough. You are not trying to oversaturate it. The ratio on water is, uh, it's, it's lax, it's questionable. dough aside, grab our aluminum foil. You can do this without aluminum foil. I did that in my first batch. They are very hard. If you want something lighter, I recommend using the aluminum foil. If you don't have aluminum foil, you can still make them without. They're just going to be very heavy. I can't really tell you how much to use. This is more of a go with your feelings type of deal. I want to kind of crush it into about a flat shape. Think about making an actual cinnamon roll. You're essentially making a dough log and then you just roll it in on itself. And that's all you're doing. That's it. That's the whole thing. Make sure that you get your shape correct in the aluminum foil because that's all that's going to be supporting that dough. If you want it to have a bit of a rise, a cinnamon roll would rise a bit in the middle as it's baked and this is not going to get baked. You want to make sure that you put that into your sculpture so that you get this. If you don't, it's going to come out flat and look like that. To cover the sculpture in dough, I like to tear off little pieces and work in small patches. You can use your finger to pat out some of the extra little lines. You can also use water to smooth them down. That is our finished cinnamon roll. Now you're gonna have to let this dry overnight at least 24 hours before it's gonna get like really solid. If you do this without the aluminum, it is going to take much longer because it's a lot more dough that it has to dry. If you have a drying rack, this is a great time to use it so that way air can get underneath it and dry as well. We're gonna set this aside and then we're gonna get into painting. We're going to need our Mod Podge first, and then we're going to need our wood glue. Our Mod Podge is going to act as our base coat. Salt is a preserving agent. It dries things out. 
when you put it with wood glue immediately, it starts to kind of ruin this coat underneath and you cannot get a good smooth multiple layers and we are going to need multiple layers. For both the Mod Podge and the wood glue, you're gonna do two layers. You're gonna start with the big brush first and then go in with the smaller brush to get in those little crevices. Now that we've got our sealing coats on, the wood glue has finally dried, you've got this nice puffy texture. Make sure it fills all those pores, otherwise it's gonna look really doughy and kind of like a, not really doughy, but more like a biscuit. Thanks to our wood glue, that also gives it a bit of a yellow coat to it, so that helps us out a lot. Because the wood glue left such a yellow pigment, I'm only gonna use tan in this process instead of using any of the yellow to blend it down or make it look like dough. This does come out a little bit on the golden side, a little more brown than I would have liked at the end, but still happy overall. Next, I'm gonna use the oil paint to give us that cinnamon effect, starting by a pretty heavy line on the inside and then stippling out to give some nice shadowing. It's time for icing. All we're gonna need is hot glue and a little bit of white paint. Don't recommend doing this for a really nice hot glue gun, but these ones are just the little $2.99 ones you can get at Michael's or Joann's, basically any craft store. I only recommend doing this with a high temp hot glue gun. I do not recommend a low temp. Depressing the glue gun the same way that you would and just giving it a little extra push from behind on the glue stick so that way it would depress more out and give us more consistent patterning. And then you use the nose of the glue gun to just kind of swirl the bits together so that way they act as one strand or one glob. Once the icing has hardened, you are going to start painting it, which is going to be an exercise in patience and judgment. I recommend dry brushing and just going over in several layers. This one looks a little crazy, but I'm a lot happier with a lot more of this golden brown. Um, I like the look of this one the most, this cute little mini one. The random swirls were much better. This, these look a little too uniform for my liking and these ones were tests, so you yeah, know. From the distance that I need, I think this is gonna do just fine for my purposes. Hopefully you can take this and do something cool with this. My friends, that's the end, but we'll be back to craft again, especially if you like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you.